This uses an off-the-shelf Wimshurst generator. It's available from Edmund Scientific. Okay. I've actually had this sitting on a shelf for a few years. I finally found an application for it. Okay, doing this so, testing. So, yeah, with the Wimshurst. Yeah, you just turn the handle. Okay, and it collects static electricity from the air through charge separation. Accumulates yeah. that charge in these two Leyden jars, which are nothing more than capacitors. And then when the potential reaches the breakover potential, okay, in the air, you get a spark gap. Okay. And now you're running this through carbon electrodes, right? That's right. Yeah, these carbon electrodes are the secondary arc. Okay, the primary arc generated up here. Okay, and that's your primary energy. Now, I'm seeing an arc at the top. But not the bottom. Right. Well, well that, that's because it's too bright in here. Oh, okay. 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 It's a little bit dimmer than you'd be able to see the secondary arcs. And what I'm using here are carbon, graphite, gouging rods. Okay. Okay. And the silver rods here, that's tungsten, thoriated tungsten rods. So I have a little air gap between the two. And that air gap is critical because what we're seeing here is also a fusion of elements. Mm. Okay, and this fusion is the oxygen in the air combining with the carbon, okay, to form iron. So we have a alchemical transmutation process occurring in an electric carbon arc. And okay. I have discovered excess energy, okay, in this carbon arc process. So you're, you're actually creating, so you think it's some kind of a low energy nuclear reaction then? Exactly. And I found that out by configuring this. Well, actually it was a phone te teleconferencing with uh, Stefan Hartmann in uh, Germany. He suggested using the carbon okay, in this process. Mm, okay. Because he observed that in the Newman motor. Yeah, okay, yeah. Joseph Newman motor, where he used an array of eight of these carbon rods. So uh, Stefan suggested using carbon in your experiments, see if there's any kind of over unity effects. And okay. it turned out that uh, yes indeed there, there is. So with one carbon arc, I see an excess energy here of 140%. And I baseline that with no arc at all. Okay. If I take the arc out of the circuit, I have a baseline energy charging up this capacitor okay, to a certain voltage level. When I introduce one arc into the circuit, I notice that that voltage increased for the same amount of operating time. Okay. So the voltage increased with my baseline voltage, so I'm calling that an overunity effect. Okay. 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 And it's based on energy. So it's that's energy so the carbon arcs capacitor. are really the key of this year's work then. Exactly. Yeah. Now I also experimented with other valves, okay, that use different materials. And every time I observed under unity effects, meaning that the baseline is without the valve in place. Okay, when I introduced the valve, the energy was less than that baseline energy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but with the carbon arc, the opposite occurred. Okay, the, the energy was above the baseline. So with that known, I'm able to calculate what the COP of the system is. And for one arc, okay, the COP is about 140%. That's when good. I introduce two arcs in the circuit, I have two arcs here, the energy went up to 170 percent. Okay. So what Joe Newman's doing in his motor, what Stefan Hartman suggested, is moving in the right line here of increasing energy. So you tried three. So then I tried three, okay, in this system, and then I noticed that the COP went down. So that told me that the phenomena, the excess energy phenomena here is electromagnetic, and it's a wave action. And these waves can add and subtract so that when I have two, it increases. When I add the third, it decreases a little bit. So the waves, the electromagnetic waves, are subtracting in that case. 
Yeah.